thank you this morning so much, Lord, for who you are and what you're doing. We ask, Father God, that, Father, you just anoint your servant as he delivers the word because your word's already anointed. So, Father, we thank you for your word. And God, I ask for every heart, every life that's here this morning that you'd minister to them. Speak your word. Your word is alive. And, Lord, it's quick and powerful and sharp. Lord, so we thank you, Lord, that your word will do what it's supposed to do. The Bible says your word will never return void. Father, even as it goes forth, it will never return void. So even as we're praying for some loved ones that, uh, that, are, that don't know you yet, Lord, let us be confident in the fact that the word is in them. They've heard the word, and the word will not return void. So thank you, God. We give you praise for that right now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Well, praise God. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Yes, amen, amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 5, and we're going to read verses 1 to 11 here. And I want to teach, and I, and I want to just declare the goodness of God this morning. Amen. So in verse 1 of Luke chapter 5, I'm going to be reading out of the NIV version, but it says this. It says, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. And Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Amen. Let's go to verse 1 real quick. And it says this, just one more time. It says, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the, the, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. And verse 2 says, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. And it's important for you to understand that the word of God was going forth. People were listening to the word of God. And there's two groups of people in this story or in this scenario. There is a group of people who were listening to the word. And there's a group of people that were not listening to their word. There's a group of people that were doing something else as the word of God was going forward. Amen? And so one group of people were just washing their nets. And if you study that method of, wa of them washing their nets, it's actually, you know, to give their nets longevity as they use it. If they don't wash it because of the salt and the materials of the water, it will deteriorate that. And so what they do is they wash their nets to be able to continue to use it more. Amen? And so it's like dry cleaning. You know, if you dry clean your clothes, you know, they last longer because there's a method of what they're doing. And so the Word of God is going forth. Jesus is teaching but he's on shore. And what I want you to see here, church, and is when you study the word, there are always levels. Everyone say levels. There are always levels in the spirit. There's levels of our relationship with God. There's always levels. Amen? Now listen, when I received Jesus, okay, he was my savior. But as time went on, he became my Lord. What is the difference between Savior and Lord? Well, Savior, he saved me. His work on the cross saved me. But me, him being Lord has to do with me crucifying my flesh, crucifying my will. And then he becomes the Lord. Come on now. The Lord of my life. Does that make sense? So one level is amazing. Listen, if he, if he did nothing else for us, he saved us, okay? He saved us. He's the Savior. But listen, there's something that takes place when he becomes the Lord of our life. 
It causes us, it causes change in our life when he becomes Lord. Amen. My character begins to change. My, my, my speech begins to change. Amen. Listen, I'll tell you this. God saved you, but, but there is a transformation that takes place. You know, I'm going to use Winsome as an example because she uses this Jamaican term called pop off. And so what that means is that she used to go gangster on people when they frustrated her and made her mad. She said she used to pop off on them. But she noticed that now as she's serving the Lord, come on now, she's laughing. But listen, serving God and everything. Now, she says, you know, Pastor, I don't pop off on people as much anymore. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord is filling you. You're crucifying your flesh. Amen. Come on now, you with me? So, so the word was going forth, and there was a group that were working, doing something else, as Jesus was teaching. Now, the Bible doesn't say that they didn't hear one word that he was saying. But how many of you guys know there's a difference, come on, husbands and wives, that there's a difference when, between hearing you and listening to you. There's a two different things. So, but for the sake of the story, my interpretation of it is that these guys were just over on the side just doing their thing. These people are hearing the word. They're not hearing the word. But the word, come on now, the word was going forth. The word was going forth. And they were on short. Now listen, we're got, Jesus is about to take things to another level. Now watch this. Verse 3 says, he got into, let's put all of our phones on silent. Let's do that real quick, amen? So listen, verse 3, it says, He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Let me read that one more time, because this is we're teaching this morning, okay? It says, he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat, okay? This is another level. He just went off ashore. How many of you guys know that on the shore, or listen, it, it, or, or everyone or the average, or whatever, you can be on shore. Those are the shore people. Those are the people in the bleachers that bought a ticket to watch the real players play the game. And so Jesus, he puts out a little bit. He says, listen, we're going to go deeper into this thing. Let's go off of shore. Off of shore is where average is. On the shore is, I'm sorry, on the shore is where average is. On the shore is where just like, you know what? Yeah, this is, this is what everybody's saying. This is what everybody's doing and all this. But he said, listen, we're going to put out a little bit. Now, here's the thing this, that's so important is that he used Peter's boat. He used Peter's boat. Peter had to say yes for Jesus to use his boat. Come on now. You hear, you, listen, hear what I'm saying. It may sound simple, but it's profound. Peter had to let him use his boat. Not only did that Jesus became the captain of Peter's boat because he told Peter where to go. That's Peter's boat. He's the captain. But all of a sudden, Jesus became the captain, and he said, he said, you need to go out a little further. And he goes out a little further. Now, let's continue. So check this out. We're going to go to another level. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let the nets down for a catch. Put out into deep water. Church, can I say this to you? No matter what you hear on TV, no matter what you hear from any other person, I want to say this to you, that there are levels in your walk with Christ. And there's levels of the word of God. When you Lend your ear to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He will show you things that you never, ever saw. Even though you may have read this, seen this a million times, he will show you things. Even, this is what's amazing. Even as I'm speaking right now to you, there are people sitting in the chairs that as this word goes forth, even though the subject may not pertain to the one thing that the Lord is speaking to you about, listen, you will hear from God because his word is living and his word is active. His word is living and his word is active. So here now, listen, Jesus is now in control. Jesus takes control of the boat. 
It's Peter's boat. And he says, go out further or go out deeper. Can I tell you, church, don't ever settle on just average. Don't ever settle on anything that you do for just average. Can I tell you something? The temptation is great to be average. Sometimes it's so much easier just to be average. It's just the temptation of that is just like, you know what? I'm just going to go through the motions on this. Can I tell you something? In anything in your life, your marriage, your business, your ministry, whatever you do, if you settle for average, you're really not being average. You're actually sliding backwards. Because standing still is never really standing still. You're actually going backwards. And Jesus told Peter in his own boat that Jesus was in right now, he said, I want you to go out into deep water. I want you to go out into deep water. And you got to know this. Listen, if the, the one thing that I want to get out of these verses up to this point is this, is if you let Jesus come into your boat, if you let him in your boat, your boat could be your whole life, but your boat has different aspects of it. Your boat could be your children. Your boat could be your husband, your wife. Your boat could be business. Your boat could be finances. And there is a difference when Jesus is in control of the boat or he's not in the boat at all. And I want to tell you this, church, don't just hang out on the shore. We got to go to another level. All of us on everything. Because he said, on the shore, put out a little further. Come on now, go out into deep water. Now let's take a look at what the word says here. So, so it says um, uh, in verse 4, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Now do you all know that the homeboys cleaned the nets already? They already clean their nets. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? That's just like saying, like, wives, let me just give it to you like this. And, and I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to be chauvinistic, but I do not do the laundry in my house. But I'm just saying. So it's just like you just washed the clothes and you just folded the clothes and then you just threw the clothes back in the washing machine. These guys just clean their nets. They're ready to pack it in. They didn't catch anything. So Jesus is in the boat. He's teaching, go out into deep waters. He said, let your nets down for a catch. Listen to this. Verse 5, Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Listen, how many of us are we in our lives Working things out without God in the boat. How many of us are doing things, it could be any area of your life, are trying to work it out in your natural self, your natural mind, your just your ways, rather than saying, what does God have to say about it? Because here's the thing, you could, the word is going forth, it's always going forth. But you could just be over here washing your nets. And there's a catch that's waiting if you wait on the Lord. So he says to them, go deep, drop your nets. Jesus, do you know that we just washed our nets Jesus, do you know that I already put the for sale sign on my business that it's like it's over? You know what I'm saying? Do you know that we filed divorce papers like it's over? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying, Jesus? I folded the nets like I cleaned the nets. I'm moving on with my life. But there's a difference when Jesus steps into the boat and begins to direct and begins to say, hey, Peter. You know, this spot that we're from, we just went a little bit into the water. You got a taste for that? Because, listen, now we're going to go into deep water. And can I say this to you? Before they went into the deep water, what was it that Jesus was doing before they went out into the deep? Can somebody tell me? What was he doing? 
He was preaching. He was teaching what? The word. Before you go out into deep water, the word will always go forth. The word will always go forth. People of God, let me say this to you. The word must be prevalent in our lives. There's tons of people that say, I feel this or I feel that or all these different things. And listen, I, I believe that the Lord speaks in, all, in so many different ways and all the. But can I tell you this? The word of God stands strong and the word of God stands true. And listen, you could don't don't listen to anyone that says something that is contrary to God's word. Because God will never go against his word to perform his will. He'll never do that. Because he is his word. Come on, church. He is his word. So the word goes forth, and all of a sudden, Randy, he calls Peter. And those that are in the boat, let's go out deeper. And I want you to drop your nets. For a catch. So here we go. So in verse 6, it's when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. They caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break at the word of the Lord. Let's continue. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. So I want to get to Peter in a minute or Simon in a minute here. But can I say this to you? We've worked all night. I believe God does honor greatly the work of your hands. He bl the Bible says he blesses what you put your hand to. I would even gather to say that even in this text and this message, that had Peter and, and, and his group not diligently tried to get to, to work for the harvest, Maybe they wouldn't have had Jesus step into their boat. I don't know. But here's the thing. They tried it one way, but Jesus stepped into the boat, and he did it another way. He did it his way. And I want to ask you a question like, what in your life do you feel is at a standstill? Or what do you feel in your life this morning as you think about your life and you think about your family, you think about just what is going on with you? What do you, what do you see at a standstill? And how, listen, how can we press in deeper and find out, Lord, what do we do? What do we do, Lord, about pressing deeper into this situation so that at the right time, you can let down your nets for a catch. I want to segue. I wasn't planning on saying this. But do you know, and I'll comment on this next week when Pastor Cheon comes to speak at our church next week. But do you know there's power in alignment? There's people that have done things around you that they have broken through certain things or areas of their life that you want to speak to those people because they have something to give and to impart because you haven't been there yet. Come on now. My, when I was 30, when I was, I think I was 30, Five or 36 or 37, one of those ages, my real estate mentor was 28 years old. He owned over 50 huge properties in Tampa. He was 28 years old. Here I am going to Cheesecake Factory, taking him out to lunch and saying, listen, Ryan, I appreciate your time and this is what I'm doing. Can you give me some guidance? Can you give me some guidance? A guy, his 10-year plan was already in operation, like meaning his 10-year plan was at that moment, if he didn't want to work for 10 whole years and do nothing, just do his life the way he does it, go out to eat for lunch, have Starbucks for breakfast, everything that he does in his life, 
he didn't have to work anymore. And so I don't care that he was younger. What I care about is what he knew. And so when I sat with him and just began to, you know, pick his brain, listen, he had been somewhere I had never been. Just like next week, there's a man of God coming that's been to nations and cha helped change nations. And here I am. I'm just trying to change a church and a city in Baldwin Village by doing Dream Fest. Come on now. Do you hear what I'm saying? We have something to learn and to be deposited into us. My meetings this past week and getting ready, Pastor Daniel, for Dream Fest, they've been meeting with Walmart, meeting with different uh, uh, business people, uh, doing all these different things. The guy that's coming next week, he meets with presidents, kings, you know, uh, generals in the army of God to change nations. But guess what that does for us? It immediately takes us to another level because there's going to be a deposit that is going to be made next week. I am confident of that and praying for that. You have to recognize the people that are around you because we all have gifts. Let me tell you something. We all have gifts. As I look around this room, it cracks me up. Like, who's got what? It's like, honestly, when it comes to wisdom, I call him Deacon Marcus. I, I say things to him not even knowing that I'm actually probing him because he walks in wisdom. He walks in wisdom. I just ask him stuff because I know that he walks in those things. Billy and Marilyn back there, everyone just thinks that they sing and, and do all these different things, and, and that's who they are. They were, they were this, that, and the other. Let me tell you, those are the smartest people that are around my life that, you know what, they come up with the best ideas. I'm like, you know what, that's a great idea. I mean, all around us everywhere is people of faith. Pastor Daniel and Tracy, man, just a power couple, just... Man, just doing great, great things, man. You know, Pastor Daniel hears from God. Man, the prophetic word flows in his life. Pastor Prince, man, you know that the other day, this man right here, how old are you, Pastor Prince? I won't tell. He's not going to tell. Listen, <laughs> listen, he's not going to tell. Do you know, listen, me, Pastor Prince, Josh and Geneva, the other day, listen, the other day, we put 1,200 flyers on vehicles all around the DreamFest area. That dude right there. Just going. A heart for souls. We all have different gifts, church. Every one of us has different gifts. But can I say this to you? The difference between people that see some great, crazy things happen and those that live in average and mediocrity are the people that say, Jesus, come into my boat. Jesus, you know what? Oh, Jesus, you need my boat? Then you know what? Get into my boat. And you know what? Whatever you say, even though in the natural, I'm tired, I'm hungry, we haven't caught one fish. We've, Jesus, we've been working, 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 but I know who you are. And if you say you're going to use my boat and I'm, you're going to get into my boat and you're going to tell me even though I'm the captain of my boat, but now I'll give you the authority to be the captain and you're going to tell me and guide me to take me out into deep water and you're going to tell me at that moment, drop your nets for a catch. And it can happen just like that. I want to reiterate something that happened a week ago. We went to the Dream Fest in Oxnard. Everybody knows where Oxnard is up north, right? For our Dream Fest, I was completely, now listen, I'm sorry, I'm embarrassed to say this. I was completely content, like I thought I was the bee's bee, by us being able to offer a brand new iPad a brand new iWatch. I was definitely getting the flat screen TV. I was definitely getting a bicycle. And 
the Xbox One. I don't even know what that is, but I know there's different numbers of that, okay? The Xbox One. Jamil's laughing at Pastor. Okay, that's funny. Listen, so I was great. I was like, man, these are great prizes. But guess what? Guess what deep water looks like? I went to the Dream Fest at Oxnard, Renee Mackey, and the pastor that was doing it up there, he had six bicycles, he had a washing machine, he had a coffee maker, he had, I was like, oh no. I was like, man, I'm standing on the shore. I'm just standing on the shore. You know, this brother went out into, into some water over there because look what he's given these people. Like he's, <laughs> you know, I was like, listen, and not in a, comp I promise you, listen, not in a competition type way, knowing that Dream Fest LA is coming, but I just said, I was like, look what he got. Look what he got. And guess what? I was motivated in my faith, and I put it out to this church. Do you know how many bicycles we're going to have next week? I think it's like 23. I think it's like 23 bicycles. We got Pastor Prince hooked us up with a businessman that's cooking for 200 people. He's bringing barbecue pork sliders and potato salad and, and stuff and all that. Listen, why? Listen, just why? Listen, I, 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 honestly, I can't take credit. I give Pastor Sam and Oxnard credit because when I saw what he was giving away, I was like, man, I'm thinking small. Now we have big. When they, those kids see all those bicycles on the stage, you know, they're going to be like, oh, my God, we've never seen this over here. And I know there's businessmen that do more bicycles than that. But you want to know something in that area? Because I'm in there all the time in Baldwin Village. I've never seen them give away stuff like that. Me and Pastor Prince have been to many events where they give stuff away. I've never seen them give, give stuff like that away. And here's the thing, church. Listen, once again. Would you all pray with me that there would be the word retention? Please, Jesus, how can it be possible to spend this money to go into a place? Listen, do you think I care about looking good? I could care less how I look. What I care about is there has to be retention of souls. There has to be a retention of people that receive Jesus Christ. Listen, the work is not the day of the event. The work is two days after when we start following up with these people. And calling them and talking to them and just saying, where are you spiritually? How can we help you? Listen, you received Christ that day. Listen, and trying to change the legacies of families. When we were out the other day on Saturday morning, that was, was it yesterday? Gosh, it seems like just the days running into each other. Yesterday, I walked up to this father and son. They were playing in the park. And as we were finishing, I walked up to him and I, man, listen, this is so good. I gave him a flyer and I said, hey, and he was in, it was Spanish. And I said, I talked to him in Spanish. I said, sir, I said, uh, you want me to tell him, want me to tell you what I told him in Spanish? I'm just kidding. I'm just you know, messing around. Listen, so, so I give him the flyer and I said, hey, sir, we're doing this event. And the little boy says, I already got my flyer at school. Come on now. And I'm just like, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God for Principal Jackson. And, and Marcus connected us with Principal Jackson over at Hillcrest. And he's on board and, and handing the flyers out to the schools. But can I tell you something, church? Listen, this will be the greatest thing we will see so far. And it's only the beginning. I remember. How many of you guys remember the day? Come on now. Some of you remember the day that I came up and I said, hey, guys, listen. I just want to tell you a, so an idea that I have. There's this little park, and it has, right, Randy, these thousands of apartment homes all around. And I said, you know, I feel like we should do birthday parties for them. And I said, what do you, what do you guys think about that, you know? And, and this is what our needs are. And I think we need to just step out in faith to do little birthday parties. The first one we had was 29 children. 29 and now what? We're going to see a thousand people come because one day we all said, you know what? There was some of you, one of you guys bought a generator. 
one of you guys bought like the sound system. Sister Alice came and said, Pastor, I got this. Other people said, hey, I got this. And we just began to step out into faith. Right, Joanne? And just step out into faith. And you know what? I believe it's not only going to be in Baldwin Village. I believe we're going to go to Compton next. I believe we're going to set up Dream Fest where people just, where, where we can listen, and it's not about us. I believe we can go to Compton and find a pastor and say, hey, listen, I, I want to find a hungry pastor. Come on. Now. This, there's too many religious people out there. There's too many, just too many people out there that are just, I'm sorry to say, phony and just, just you know, out for themselves. I want to find somebody who's hungry for Christ and hungry for people that loves people. And when we find them, say, listen, we're going to do a Dream Fest for you. Make sure that your team follows up on these souls. Because it's not about our kingdom. It's about his kingdom. Come on now. Come on. Give God praise this morning. So verse 8. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. What is this show about Peter? Peter, listen, just like Pastor Sam caused me to look at myself and say, Father, I'm sorry for thinking small. And I did that. Father, sorry for thinking small. Do you know that just like that, Peter looked at all of those things and he was like, God, sorry. For having no faith. Sorry for even doubting you. I bet you what was replaying in his mind was the fact that he told Jesus, you know, we fished all night and didn't catch anything. And if Jesus would have said, oh, you fished all night? Oh, you guys are probably tired. You guys are probably, how about this? Let's, don't worry about that. Let's go to breakfast. No, 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 no. Guys, let me just say this to you. I've been doing this a long time, just like many of you had, serving the Lord. And at those times when you just feel like giving up is the times when Jesus will press you to do the thing. Because on the other side of that obedience is the harvest that you could not see in your natural mind. The harvest is on the other side of that obedience. The harvest is on the other side of that obedience. God was, he is not out to let you down. He is out to have you experience things you would have never experienced before. Had you not stepped out in faith. Wayne Gretzky, you guys heard this before. He said, you miss 100% of the shots you never take. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. And when you step out, if you let Jesus in your boat, listen, and I'm telling you this, if you're in that, like, off the shore area of your life right now, can I say this to you? Would you have faith this morning for your, this is a personal thing, would you have faith this morning to step out into deep water? It's time to step out into deep water. And here is, here is my favorite part of the whole teaching. This is it right here. Listen, verse 10. The middle part, it says, then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. I'm going to ask the band to come up. They, listen, listen to what I'm trying to say to you. Do you understand that these people were fishermen? Their life is fishing. They just caught the mother load. They have never caught a catch so big that their boats were sinking. They had never done, they have never experienced that. Here, listen, here's the next level. It's not just deep water. Because in deep water, you're going to experience some cool stuff. Guess what the next level after deep water is? The next level is he is all you need. He is all you need. Because they walked away, Gigi, from the catch. 
They didn't take time to clean the fish and sell the fish. They walked away from it because they found something greater than the catch they were originally hoping and praying for. They found him. And that's what I'm trying to say to all of you here today is, listen, no matter which way the world goes, I want to tell you something. If you have him, you have everything. You know, where I live, sometimes the thoughts go in my mind. Some of you are going to laugh. And I think to myself, if a tsunami comes, I'm like, I'm like in the bullseye of like, what you know what I'm saying? And, and my natural mind starts thinking stuff. But then I start thinking, I thank God for Catalina Island that will block any of that or whatever. But, but here's the thing. But I, my mind starts thinking of funny stuff. Listen, my, my mind really thinks of funny stuff sometimes, and your mind can think of funny stuff. But here's what I want to say to you. But what if tomorrow I took my last breath? How would I feel? To be honest with you, for a moment, I would feel shortchanged because I know what God put me here on this earth for. I know what he told me to do. I know, listen, I, I, I've let him in my boat. I want to go into deep water. I would feel like, you know, even some things like with me and Joanne and in our marriage and our walk and things, I would feel for a moment, I would feel short change. I think in the blink of an eye is if I saw the crest of that wave coming and I'm just like holding Joanne, like, here it is. That's it. You know, like, love you and kiss her and, you know. Hold, hold Judah and Jira, our two little dogs, and just be like, cool. You were the last people we'll ever see. But do you know the Bible says in a moment, I would be in the presence of the Lord. And the greatness of him would overshadow the love I have for my wife. Being in his presence would overshadow anything I thought I was missing on earth. And what I want to say to you is this. I do not know with everything going on, just, I, I just know this. He's got me in the palm of his hand. And he's got you in the palm of his hand. And my job on this earth, church, listen, is to do one thing, to pursue him and, listen, to release forth on the earth what he's equipped me to do. He gave me his Holy Spirit. He called me to walk in power. Come on, church. He called us to walk in power. So I'm to love on people and minister to them. I'm to do all those things. And if tomorrow was the day, it's cool. There's peace. But guess what? It would be one huge thing, church. Hear me now. Hear me. It would be one huge thing for me, my personal life, that I would really hurt even though I'll be in his presence. I know that the nets that I have want to catch more fish. I know that the nets that I have want to catch more fish. And I would be hurt that I would not have that opportunity to release nets on the earth to catch more fish. Because guess what? If that same tsunami came, it would be lit literal people in my own building that when that thing hits or hit, guess what? They would step into eternity without God, separated from Him forever. And that has got to bother us. It has got to bother us. It has to bother us. It has to bother us. It has to bother us. Because it's real. It's real. It's real. It's got to bother us. And I believe this week we're doing something about it. We're releasing our nets. Jesus, and here's the prophetic word. Can I say this to you? There were two boats. The one allowed Jesus to enter 
allow Jesus to come into the boat and the other one was just there. Who was the person that got the harvest? It was the one that launched out into the deep. And can I say this to you? With this journey that I've been on with you, I know a lot of you think like, well, pastor's been doing all this and stuff like that. Listen, it's going to take a team. It's going to take a village to pull this off this week. Can I say this to you? That with all of these things, there has been times, Clarissa, I felt like saying, you know what? Let's not, let's not do this. It's just too much work for a small church. But guess what? When Jesus gets in the boat, it could look like, what are you doing? Listen, and if the truth be told, some of you even have, when you heard about this, you're like, what is he doing? That's the truth. What is he doing? Uh-uh. You know why? Because there's a great harvest. And if my nets almost break, they didn't say they broke, but they were about to break, but they pulled the, that harvest on shore. Hallelujah. And those fish were cleaned. Those fish were sold. Somebody took that harvest. But those guys walked away from all of that because they said, we want to follow you. Come on now. So I want to tell you that let's launch out into the deep. Let's launch out into the deep. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Come on. And we have to go after these people. I want you to stand to you on your feet this morning. Come on. And I want you to put your hands out in front of you. Hallelujah. And Father, I just thank you right now. We just open up our hands, God, and we just, we just say to you, God, first of all, forgive us if we've been hanging out on shore. Forgive, forgive us if we've just been hanging out on the land. Lord, it's time to launch out. It's time to go launch out into the deep. And Father, everything that we've been praying, everything that we've been studying, everything, Father, let it be for such a time as this that we would be ready for such a great harvest of souls, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, Father, that you will just do great and mighty things in our lives. That you would move mightily, that you would stir hearts this morning. That every one of us would say, God, it's time to launch out into the deep. So, Daddy God, I thank you that you have met every need and you've superseded the desire. But, Lord, I know there's people in this place Lord, that feel like giving up. And I ask you in the name of Jesus that you would minister to them, O oh Lord, and give them hope. I thank you, Father, those that are with them are greater than those that are against them. So we just thank you this morning. <laughs> Minister, God. Minister in your fullness. Minister in your grace this morning, O oh God. Cause that, that precious soul in a seat this morning not to give up. Not to give up. Not to give up. That it's time to fight. Hallelujah. It's time to fight. Come on, say it's time to fight.